All right, it's game number 82, the Celtics season finale at TD Garden against the Nets. And this is the Celtics pregame report brought to you by CLNS Media. I am your host, Josue Pavone, and we'll be spending this episode recapping the season and, of course, looking ahead to the start of the NBA playoffs. Boston, of course, still doesn't know which team they'll be facing. That is something that we'll know for sure by the end of tonight's game. But in the meantime, let's chat about the current Celtics team. And joining me to do so is Ben Rohrbach of Yahoo Sports. What's going on, Ben? Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, no problem, man. It's obviously tough to talk about the first round series matchups for the Celtics right now. I mean, when you don't know who they're playing, um, we'll get a better sense of what to expect by the end of the night. But talk to me about the guys you expect to step up big for this Kyrie irving Celtics squad. I mean, we know about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. We know how important they're going to be to this offense. Brad Stevens is going to also lean on veteran Al Horford in the front court to help lead the young group. But name another player on this team who you can expect to surprise people in the playoffs. Who's an unsung hero who you think will come up big for the Celtics? Unsung hero. I think the guy that is really important is Shane Larkin. Because they need another ball hander behind Tito Rogier without uh, without Marcus Smart for, I guess, at least the first six games of the series. So I love what he's been doing all season. He brings great energy off the bench. He makes smart decisions and He's gonna. I feel like he's gonna actually have a big role in the series. Speaking of Marcus Smart, man, we did have an update on him Monday. He's been reevaluated and could return as soon as uh, Game Six of this opening round series. Um, you know, which is obviously huge for the Celtics team. But how big will his return be for a team that, of course, could use uh, any help in the backcourt, especially defensively? Do you think Marcus Smart is a guy who could ultimately be the difference between the Celtics winning or losing a playoff series? I do. I don't. I don't know if it'll matter in the first round series just because he may, I guess, April 27th was the target date, which I think would either be a seventh game or second round. So I do think he would be a huge boost if they were able to get to the second round. Just to, just his attitude, what he brings is competitively. He can definitely change a series. Him and Rogier are sort of were great off the bench all year behind uh, Irving, but combined, I think maybe they can make up a lot of a lot of what they have been missing in the last couple of weeks. This edition of the Celtics pregame report is brought to you by SeatGeek. Download the SeatGeek app today, and you can save twenty dollars off your first purchase when you enter the promo code Garden Report. The NBA playoffs is just around the corner, and SeatGeek is your place for tickets and with the best deals around. Download the SeatGeek app, enter the promo code Garden Report, and save $20 just for listening to the Celtics pregame report. Ben, it's been one heck of a ride covering this Celtics team this season. From Gordon Hayward, uh, five minutes in, uh, missing the rest of this regular season, to Kyrie Irving missing the final quarter and being ruled out for this playoff run. But which player would you say has surprised you the most this year and why? Oh, that's a good question. I think probably Rozier. I... I did like I did not like him when he was first drafted. I didn't understand why they picked another point guard, but since then he's been really good and he started to show flashes last year, especially in the playoffs. But this year, I mean, he's a bona fide player, maybe even a future starting point guard in the league. Definitely a player who will be a huge part of this team going forward. So I feel like his progress has been the most surprising maybe the I don't know Tatum might be in that mix too because just you don't expect as much from a rookie but we kind of all expected him to be good Rogier has been sort of exceeded all of our expectations what's your favorite win of the season what do you think was the best win uh I guess it comes down to either the Warriors or Rockets with the comeback wins against both of them the the Warriors one was just really fun but the, the Rockets one was it's sort of insane the way that Smart changed it in the last couple of seconds. It was just, I guess that was probably the most typical win of the Celtics season just because it's been so weird and crazy. Yeah, I, I <laughs> definitely. I that Rockets win. That's the one I would pick. And I have to, I got to be honest with you, man. That after the second charge, I literally just started like laughing hysterically, man. I just couldn't believe he, he, he did it again. And Harden's yeah, face yeah. was priceless. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was classic. I mean, that's the sort of thing that Smart brings that, it's just like you, you never expect it, but he just brings these plays that 
that change games as cliche as it sounds. Definitely the loudest I heard the Garden this season. All right, prediction time, Ben. I'm not talking about who's going to win this game between the Celtics and the Nets. This time, I want to hear your playoff prediction. Which team do you think the Celtics will be facing in the first round, and do you see the Celtics coming out of that series and moving on to the Eastern Conference semis? I think now it seems like Miami is the – now that they lost to Washington, Miami is the, is the most likely – team that they'll face, but um, I, I don't know. I mean, that's, any series that they get is going to be tough just because they're so undermanned. I feel like that's, they're sort of like mirror images of each other, that, that Miami team and the Celtics team. They're just really well-coached teams that try really hard. They're solid on defense, and they don't really have a star, per se, at the, at the helm. So I, I think the Celtics could win that game, but it would be a long series, six or seven games. So, I mean, that's the Celtics could win that series, but I'd say I would prefer Miami or, or Milwaukee if I'm the Celtics over the the Wizards just because of their star power that they can bring in the playoffs. Absolutely, Ben. I'm with you on that. I think either one of those teams would be a, a, a much uh, easier opponent for the Celtics. And that may be the case, but of course, the Celtics didn't do themselves any favors with uh, with that loss against the Wizards. Yeah, I think that was a good example of sort of the challenges that they'll face in the playoffs, just in terms of creating offense, I think the defense will be will be good, um, but it's just who's going to step up. I mean, anybody really is capable. It's, it's just whether everyone does at the same time. All right, he is Ben Roarback of Yahoo Sports. You can check him out on Twitter at B Roarback. Uh, he's actually got a great piece up, a series piece that he's been working on, uh, covering Brad Stevens and the, the, the Coach of the Year conversation. Uh, he's, you can see his work at uh, sports.yahoo.com, the NBA section, of course. Or you can follow him on Twitter and, and, and click the link. Hey, Ben, real quick, tell me, tell me real quick about that um, um, the piece you got with covering Brad Stevens throughout the entire season. What, what is it, five pieces there, five parts? Uh, it's actually the sixth piece came out today. It's for it's at this website Parquet Post that I created this year. The subscription site that I've just been doing is sort of a passion project. But um, yeah, I I've been just sort of telling like stories that haven't been told elsewhere there all year. And this one is sort of a deep dive into the making of Brad Stevens. I talked to his uh, high school and college teammates, his, his coaches from that time. And uh, and talked to Brad himself about sort of the lessons that he learned growing up in the game that that have shaped the way that he looks at basketball now. I think it really came out cool, and I'm pretty proud of it. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. Give him a follow on Twitter. You can check that out, and it's uh it is subscription based, and it's very expensive. It's one dollar. It's a whole dollar, right, Ben? <laughs> yeah. So spread the word. Get it out there, and. Uh, yeah, we all the subscriptions went to um, charity all year, so um, it's a cool thing. It's definitely worth the the one dollar a month, the twenty five cents a week. Twenty five cents a week. Come on, Ben, stop ripping people <laughs> off, dude. Jeez. I know, right? People are broke out there. <laughs> all right, Ben. Hey, it's always fun talking sports with you, man. I'll see you again soon. All right. All right, thanks, Joe Sway. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Celtics pregame report. Make sure you check out the Garden Report after the game on the YouTube channel for CLNS Media for all the raw and uncut videos from the locker room and the press table after the game. You can also check out plenty of reaction from myself and others from the parquet on YouTube. That's CLNS Media on YouTube. Check us out. Get all the coverage right there. Full-length pressers that you can't get anywhere else. Weekday shows air on the Celtics Newsfeed channel, on iTunes, Stitcher, and the CLNS Media mobile app. For today's Boston Celtics pregame report with Josue Pavone, this is Josue Pavone signing off.